In this video, we're gonna take a look at some of the new DSM 7.2 features that were recently released. And in specific, we're gonna look at the three best features for home users. Now there's two things I wanna be clear on. The first is that this is just my opinion. These are the three features that I think are the most important for home users. However, there are a bunch of new features coming, so I'll leave a video that Synology put up in the description in case you wanna watch it. And the second thing is that this is gonna mostly be a voiceover. So unfortunately, due to the nature of how Synology did this, there's not really anything that I can show you. Hopefully when the DSM 7.2 beta is released, I will be able to show you some of this. But for now, it's just really gonna be a voiceover over some static images from the actual live stream. So the first thing is gonna be full volume encryption. So what this means is that you're gonna be able to physically encrypt an entire volume. Now you were always able to do this at the shared folder level. And the way that it would work is that you'd mount and unmount a shared folder with either the encryption password or an encryption key. And it kind of worked at that shared folder level only. So at this point, we really have to see how Synology implements this because volume-based encryption is great. And it's something that I think that a lot of people will be able to utilize. However, depending on how it's implemented, you're gonna to have to see if it's something that you really wanna implement on your NAS. So the first thing that came to my mind was BitLocker for Windows and not necessarily how it's gonna be implemented, but how it functions. So if you implement BitLocker on a Windows PC, every time it boots up, you have to go in and enter in a password. So since they're specifically stating that it's just volume encryption, I'd imagine that you're gonna log into DSM first and then you're gonna to have to enter in a password to decrypt that volume. But the goal after you set this up is that all of your shared folders will be encrypted with this volume-based encryption. So that's the first feature. The second feature is gonna be SMB multi-channel. Now this is something that Synology has kind of promised since DSM-7, and I guess technically they're hitting that goal as long as it's released with DSM-7.2, but the initial expectation I think from a lot of people was that it was gonna be released with the DSM-7 initial rollout. Now, SMB multi-channel is something that's awesome and honestly something that I wish was implemented a lot earlier, but it's better late than never. Now, what this is gonna allow you to do is actually utilize all of the network cables that are plugged into your NAS. So what I really mean by that is SMB multi-channel will allow you to utilize all of the network connections simultaneously. So if you have a NAS and it has two one gigabit NICs, you technically will be able to transfer at network speeds up to two gigabit. Now you have to keep in mind that the device you're connecting from has to be able to support speeds up to that as well. So a good example of this would be if you have a PC and that PC has a two and a half gig NIC on it and your NAS has two one gigabit NICs on it, you'll be able to support transfer speeds up to about two gigabits per second. Now there's a few things that I need to point out here. And the first is that your network infrastructure has to support that as well. So if you have your NAS and it's plugged into a switch and your switch just has one gigabit NICs in it, you're not gonna be able to utilize those speeds. So you really need to make sure for the most part that the device you're connecting from and anything in between supports whatever speed you're trying to accomplish. So in the example that I used before, if you had a PC with a two and a half gigabit NIC, you're gonna to have to make sure you have a switch with a two and a half gigabit NIC for it as well. Now, regardless, this is a great thing. This is something that I think a lot of people will be very happy with. And the only thing that really gets me to question, which is definitely out of scope for this video, is that the Synology 2023 devices are rumored to still have one gigabit NICs. Now with this, it would have been awesome if they had upped that to say two and a half gigabit NICs because with SMB multi-channel, you'd really be able to get significantly faster speeds at that point. But like I said, that's really for a different video. So SMB multi-channel is the number two feature that I think most home users will definitely be able to take advantage of. And if you can't take advantage of it right now, it's still a great feature because you might be able to take advantage of that in the future. Now the third and final thing we're gonna take a look at in this video is Active Backup for Mac OS. Now Active Backup for Business is really just a backup suite. And at this point, Synology is really positioning itself to be a great backup destination for basically all of your home devices. So I've used Active Backup for Business for multiple years at this point for my Windows and my Linux devices. However, I haven't been able to back up my Mac. So when this is released, you're really gonna be able to back up all of your devices in Active Backup for Business. And at that point, they really position themselves with 
DSM 7.1, where you can back up one Synology NAS to another Synology NAS using Active Backup for Business as well. So if you look at this from a backup and disaster recovery standpoint, if you have a site and that site has all of your devices on it and they all back up to your first NAS, if you then buy a second Synology NAS and you put it off site somewhere, you're gonna be able to ensure that on a nightly basis, all of those individual PCs are backed up locally and then off site as well. It's really an extremely easy configuration and you're also gonna be managing everything from a central repository. So that's what I've kind of always liked best about Active Backup for Business is everything is just centrally managed. So I always had a bunch of devices and I always managed their backups individually for the most part. So everything was always backed up, but if anything ever had to be restored, I had to make sure that I connected to the right repository or I was using the correct external hard drive to make sure that I could restore whatever I had to. With Active Backup for Business, I've really just been able to set it up once and then I manage everything on the NAS. So if you look at it from that perspective, Synology is really positioning themselves as a great backup tool at this point too. It always was a great backup tool because for the most part, network attached storage is always somewhere that you could store backups and you can basically connect to it from anything if you're using SMB or NFS. But the point is that not only will you be able to back up to that device, you're also gonna be able to back up that device to another device. So when you add things like Synology Photos, which will allow you to back up your mobile photos to your NAS, and then you look at Active Backup for Business from a PC and Mac and Linux perspective, you're potentially gonna be able to back up everything important to you to your NAS. Now, those are the three features of DSM 7.2 that I think that most home users will potentially see some value from. Like I said earlier, there are a bunch of other features as well. And a lot of those features are more enterprise related. However, that's not to say that you're never gonna be able to utilize any of them. It's just really to say that they are focused more for enterprises and enterprises are really who are gonna get a lot of value out of that, more so than home users. So there's also a bunch of Synology Drive features as well that were actually recently released and I plan on making a video for that upcoming. So if you do wanna see that, please consider subscribing to the channel. But like I said earlier, I'm gonna leave the Synology live stream video in the description in case you wanna check it out. It's about an hour long. There's a lot of great things in there, but these are the three features that I thought most people would get a lot of value out of. So I'm hopeful that this video helped you guys out. If it did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, anything you want to discuss about Synology DSM 7.2, I'd love to hear it, so leave me a comment in the description. But I'll definitely be creating a few videos on DSM 7.2 as soon as it's released. So if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks, guys.